Hey everybody, Dustin Schmidt here. I'm a photographer and DP here in Oklahoma City. And today I want to talk about a Cheerios commercial that I shot uh, recently. It's a spec commercial, you know, clickbaity title that you're probably used to. No, I did not go out and shoot four Cheerios. Uh, but I wanted to shoot a short little 30 second commercial piece that I could use as marketing and uh, part of my reel when I go out and try to pitch work to creative agencies or you know anybody that's looking for this type of stuff so let's roll the commercial check it out real fast and then we'll come back and talk about you know how i shot it why i shot it in a little more depth and and get into some of the lighting and the shots so let's check it out So there it is, there's the spot. Leave your comments down below, good, bad, throw it all down there, I'll, I read and you know check out all that stuff. Uh, let's get into a little bit about the specifics of the commercial. Why would someone shoot something like this? Well, I think if you're watching this and you're uh, somebody that, that shoots video, um, is a director, DP, whatever, you know why we go out and do these jobs, uh, looking to build our reels and our portfolio. And so that's what I was trying to do here. If you've done a lot of work like I've done in the past, which is a lot of interview, corporate, documentary, B-roll style kind of work, um, that's one type of job. And you can do a bunch of that and, and you can make it look great and you can light it and you can do all those things, right? But it's a different kind of job than a narrative, commercial kind of DP or director job. Um, those are two very different things. And although you may be hired by an agency to do one thing, um, maybe the corporate documentary stuff, they probably won't hire you to, you to do the director, uh, you know, commercial type of spots. Very often, those are two different jobs, um, at least separated in a creative director or agency's mind. Um, you may be able to do both, but you have to show that you can do both. And so in order to do that, you have to shoot some stuff like that for your reel. So, I've got a long history doing all the corporate doco stuff and I need to shoot more of this type of stuff. So that was the goal here. So let's get into some of the specifics now of how this was accomplished. So a couple different steps. One, first thing that I did was try to come up with a story that I could shoot on the cheap with things that I had available to me. If you're familiar with uh, Robert Rodriguez, he famously went and shot a uh, a film for like seven grand in Mexico many years ago. Uh, he's got a great book on it. It's called Rebel Without a Crew. And if you're interested in that type of thing, you should go check that out because it's really fascinating. And nowadays it's even easier to do what he's doing. And this certainly isn't a film. It's a short little commercial. But the idea being use what's available to you, make it cheap, and just get it done and get it out there. Use what you've learned move to the next step, make something a little better, maybe a little more expensive. And you just keep going like that. And that's how you, you grow and build a career. So step one, let's look at the storyboards. This is where I started. Uh, I built these boards on Milanote, just the free, uh, free account that they have. And I started out pulling some, knowing what I had to work with, which was gonna shoot it in my kitchen, gonna shoot it with the talent I had available to me, which uh, in this case is my daughter. Uh, shoot it with minimal amount of props as possible. Um, spend about $25 to go out and buy some Cheerios, some honey, a couple little props, and that was it. So uh, equipment that I had available to me, uh, wanted to work with what I had on hand. In this case, I shot it on the Canon R5C in 8K RAW. Not really a production kind of camera in terms of ins and outs and all that type of stuff. But since it was just me shooting and operating camera on this, I'm totally fine working around the constraints that that, you know, the body and the inputs and all that uh, offers up. So no issues there. A camera lens, shot this on the Canon 24 to 70 uh, 2.8 version 2 and used that kind of like a variable prime. Would you go between 35, 50, 70? Uh, you know, mostly tried to stick to those those normal focal lengths, not anything weird in between. Also using the Sigma 18 to 35 
and shot that in the Super 35 mode on the R5C and also in the Super 16 mode in the, the RAW for both of those and used that for some of the, the insert shots. Uh, you know, the, the honey and the oats and stuff falling down. Used a couple different formats there, but mostly at K-RAW. For lights for this, I had uh, the one biggest light that I own, which is the Aperture 600X. It's their bicolor. I also have a Hive Hornet 200C, which I used as a key light a lot in this case for my talent or for the product shots. I had a, had a Light in Motion Stella 5000 and used that in some instances to add a little additional output to my key light. Uh, again, just trying to work with what I have. It would have been great to have a bunch of really large lights that I could dial up and down, but I didn't have those, so I had to double up and make use of what I have. And I also had a Lupo kick-ass panel that I used as a special in a couple different spots to just light up some little things in the frame. So that's it, and that's what I shot the whole thing with. So something else that had a primary role in this spot was haze or smoke. And this is the hazer slash really it's a really cheap small smoke machine this is a the fun 400 watt smoke machine um this is not a cinema tool i think this is just a cheap little smoker you can get it like a party store um i bought it second hand off uh, some friends that that also do video production for like 20 bucks um they threw in some free smoke so Thanks guys. And I would use that to haze up the background before we did our shots. So shoot out a little bit of smoke, wave it around with a, in this case, like a cookie sheet pan, cause I was in the kitchen. And then wait for that to kind of dissipate to the right, uh, the right level and then call action, have my talent come in and shoot my shots. Here's our outdoor setup. We just got one Aperture 600X coming in through this window right here. And I would love to put some along these other windows, but this is all I got. So this is what we got to work with for this, this setup. All right, let's watch through this video kind of scene by scene. And I'll talk a little bit about what I was trying to do, what we're doing camera wise, uh, and how we lit and shot the thing. So this opening scene here, let's play through that real quick. So there it is, first shot. And it's just kind of a little right to left move here with the camera. Um, I would have preferred to have done this with like a dolly, a Dana dolly, for example. I didn't have that, so I just kind of did it handheld and then tried to stabilize some of that in post so it wasn't quite so jerky. Um, again, shot with the R5C. R5C doesn't have any built-in uh, image stabilization or anything like that. Uh, it does have a little bit of that digitally, but since I was shooting AK RAW, I could not utilize that here, uh, but it kind of gives a nice little handheld feel um, that I utilized a little bit further in the spot as well. Uh, this was lit simply with a, a six by ultra bounce over here on the right, just out of frame. You can see the highlight on the glasses and then lighten up the face of the Cheerios box. And then to the left of that bouncing into it, um, have my 600 X shooting this way and then just bouncing that light back. I needed that to hold the window outside here. So uh, I think that was basically it, just the one really large bounce here in this shot. Uh, this is pretty tight. So as we move into this shot in the room, I'm gonna play that here. So quick shot here in the room. Let's turn our audio off here. And this move here was also done in post. So again, this was shot in 8K and just did a little, little pull out in post here in 8K. Um, this was lit. We had a, uh, um, not an aperture bulb because I used to have one of those B7Cs and it broke. Um, this was like an LIFX uh, colored bulb. Just one of those kind of cheap ones you can get at um, Best Buy. Actually, not that cheap. They're probably 80 bucks, but... Um, would have preferred like an Aptra, but also has an app. Just set that to a really warm tone in here and kind of dialed it down to the, the temp I wanted. Um, for overall ambient in this room, I had a Hornet 200C that was bounced up into the ceiling 
um, right here and turn to kind of more of a, a blue color to kind of get some of these blue tones you can see in here. So for example, you know, here on her face and here on the sheets, you can see we've kind of got these blue kind of going for this nighttime -y kind of vibe or really early morning because she's getting out of bed here. But just wanted to set a base, get a practical in here. And then I also had a big flag right here flagging off this wall to keep it dark and try to contain this uh, this kind of moonlighty light that was bouncing down onto our talent. Uh, I also had right over here, just out of frame, I had a little, to kind of get this, uh, this push from this warm practical, had a little, uh, oh gosh, what is it? Uh, kick-ass panel just tuned to kind of the same color temp as our light here and that's kind of that's what's given this highlight here along her face and kind of um, playing up the lamp effect here so had about three lights going on here we had our, our bluish kind of room ambient tone we had our practical and then we had our little push um, amplifying the practical and then just shooting from this side on sticks uh, again 24 to 70, 2.8 uh, on the R5C. This shot here coming down the stairs, this one was really simple, just one big light over here to the side, had the Aperture 600X uh, just out of frame, tuned to kind of this warm morning light, um, and that's it, just blowing in here. I don't even think, it's hard to remember now, I wish I would have taken pictures everywhere, but I may have had either uh, that six by over here I think, uh, actually I think I did. I brought that six by over here and used that um, in with the, uh, it's an ultra bounce slash, uh, you know, the other side is black. So I just using that as some negative fill over here. And that's it, kind of the one light and the, the negative fill for her coming down the stairs. This was on sticks, a little bit wider on the R5C. Okay, now we get to this shot here. Um, this had a little bit more going on here. And this one I've actually got um, kind of some behind the scenes shots, but you can see she runs in, comes, sits up in the chair. Then we go to a slightly tighter shot and a little push in here. Um, and then this over the shoulder. But these first two shots were lit basically identically. All I did was move, uh, move my framing and uh, lens choice in between here. This was a little bit wider. I think this was around a 35 and then went to about a 50 here. Again, on the 24 to 70. So lighting wise for this, this light here in the background. So this stuff coming through the windows here is all natural daylight. So nothing special coming through the windows here, exposed for these windows and then worked on everything else outside of that. This extra push through this window is the 600X. I wanted that because I wanted to get this kind of like little streak of light. You can see her run through it right here where you get this highlight on her face right here. That's from the extra push here from the 600X. That's also what's given us, uh, you know, kind of this on the wall here um, and just kind of helping amplify some of this haze that we got going on back here. This is where I use that smoke machine, all the stuff in the background here to just kind of give us a base level um, of haze here in the room. Here to light her, when she sits, basically right here, you know, in the wide, I've got a soft box. So right here is kind of an Octabox with the 200X, the, the Hornet, sorry, Hornet 200C um, is providing our key here. And then on our plant, I've got a special here, which is that Luxley um, kick-ass panel. Or not Luxley, Lupo kick-ass panel um, is providing a special here on the plant. And then I think also I had a little special here on the box, which was my Light in Motion Stella 5000. Um, just had a little reflector on that to kind of zoom in and give a little pop to this. So. We have one, two, three, four lights in here. And then over here to the right, again, 
um, six by negative fill over on this side. So we go to the tight, exact same setup here. Just like I said, a little bit tighter, a little bit different angle of view. And then we cut to this over the shoulder. We get off of sticks. This is handheld here. And exact same lighting setup as we had in our previous setups, but now just, again, slightly different camera angle. And handheld here. All this works because we're still on the same side of the line. We're shooting into the shadow side. So we get some of these nice gradations here. You know, wrapping over the hand. You know, shadows here, shadows here, shadows here. So shooting into the light. So we get something that's not going to be all flat. Exact same setup here. Again, different lens choice. I think I was on a 70 here. Uh, still handheld, um, but just changing up those tones. I don't think I even really had to change anything here. Um, this kind of highlight on the hair is still some of what we were getting through that outside. Actually, I take that back. Uh, for this one, I did bring it inside um, to not blow this window here. So no longer 600X out here. Um, in fact, I believe the 600X was back here at this point. So kind of lighten up this area back behind her head, providing a little bit of a highlight. Um, and then here in the front. Okay. So we go to this shot here. Um, this one, I changed some things up when we went to the close up. I think this is on a 70. Uh, and then to hold this window, I brought that 600 X inside exposed for the window and then just keyed here from the front with the 600X. So, in fact, I think what I did was moved, uh, I may have moved our bounce over here and keyed with the 600X into the bounce to give her a nice, uh, nice bounce. And then just let everything here on the backside um, kind of fall off to black because we were so close. And again, some haze back here for level. Handheld. Now here's the interesting, this I do have some behind the scenes shots of. Uh, this was shot down in my kind of basement studio. And what we've got going on down here is some macro slow motion shots of the honey dripping and then our oats falling. These are two different setups. Uh, the honey's the same setup. Just zoomed in to the drip and then here on the honey dipper. Now, in order to get the high frame rates that I needed here, I could not shoot the 8K raw. So this was not shot in 8K raw. This was shot in the 4K 120, which is the max frames that you can get out of the R5C. I do not own a macro lens, so unfortunately what I had to do here was get as close as I could with the 2470 and its close focus uh, at least on this shot with the honey dipper. So I think this was at 70 mil, uh, as close as I could, and then zoomed in and post. So lost some of the resolution I would have preferred. Um, you can definitely, I think, see it a little bit here. This is starting to get a little bit soft. Um, that's due to kind of blowing this up almost, you know, 200%. This video was mastered in 4K. Uh, so this shot is zoomed in. This was lit with... Uh, and I've got some behind the scenes footage of this, so I'll kind of show it, but we've got our big bounce here. We've got our 600X into that bouncing and then bouncing back. We can see some of that highlight right here and then falling off to shadow here towards camera, which is what we want. And then the background lit with the uh, Hornet 200C kind of aimed up this way to just give us a little gradation falling off on the background. And the background is this mottled gray background I kind of have, but because we're so shallow here, that just becomes a complete blur. So shooting the honey there falling at 120. And same thing with the drip, um, just focused on a different area. And again, wish I'd had a little more resolution and clarity here on the drip, but I had to zoom in quite a bit uh, just to not, due to not having a macro lens. 
This gets real interesting with the uh, with the oats here. I had to cut the front half off of a uh, a silver bowl here, a metal measuring bowl. Cut the front half off of that so I could get the angle I wanted. Otherwise, I'd be shooting down into the bowl. And I really wanted to shoot up into the bowl so you could see the oats kind of falling. Um, it makes it feel a little bigger, like you're really immersed inside the bowl. And also get a little bit of the background here. So it kind of echoes what we were getting a little bit with the uh, with the honey. So same setup on the background, 200X shooting the background here. The key thing and the hard thing here with this reflective surface was that this bowl sees everything. It sees the whole room. So in order to get rid of that reflection, I had a four by four uh, white bounce that I uh, table topped over this whole thing and just got as closely far down as I could cut out all the reflections on the bowl. Now the problem was I still had to drop the oats in here. So I'm gonna show a little bit of video of how that looks and, and then we'll come back to this. So very quickly, the problem that I have here is to try to get these oats into here without seeing the reflections in the bowl, which is very difficult. So at the moment, I'm gonna try to get something else white that will hopefully not reflect quite as much and then pour the oats through this down into our bowl. And we'll see how it goes. We might be able to make this work. So you could see a little bit of what the problem was with seeing all that. And then you can see here on this highlight, you could, uh, if you were really paying attention and you know how it was done, you could see a little bit of the shaking here of the paper, but hopefully with the activity of what was going on with the oats falling, the focus being right here, uh, some of that goes away, hopefully. And then back to same setup that we had before with talent here, slightly different camera angle kind of zoomed in to be a little tighter and was really just trying to get that smile from her. Um, hazed up the background again. Uh, same key over here from camera left with our Hornet 200C. And I want to say here in the background, maybe the second window that's over the uh, sink that you can't quite see here, this would have been our outside our uh, 600X coming through this window here. So to light up kind of this background. And then our product shot here. Um, I've got a little behind the scenes photo to show how this product shot was lit. I'm gonna put that up right now so you can check that out. And as you can see, a little bit different, we're using a bounce card to bounce into it. Um, the final styling got tweaked a little bit from this setup photo. Um, so I'll cut back here, you can see the final styling. So here's the setup for this. As you can see, I've got two lights here that are both <laughs> filling in and acting for my key. I've got a Hornet 200C and a Light Motion Stella Pro 5000. Uh, I'm just trying to use what I have on hand. And unfortunately that means I've got to double up on some of this stuff. Ideally, I would just have one really big, nice key light there. But the biggest light I have is out here filling in through this window and that's an aperture 600x and that's taking care of some of this this background kind of shafts of light that i have coming in once i get some smoke and some haze going on back here you can really see that in the final product and then we've just got a little special back here on the plant and our props. And just did a little pull out here and post with the 8K uh, and resolve. And there we go. 
that's kind of the setup and the lighting for this whole spot. All right, filming the outro for this on a different day, but just wanted to say thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.